Kele did, however, agree with MPs on the police's inability to track down Dereta. It's unacceptable that they can't find Mr. Dere for him to answer on those things. Kele said he also did not know about the private intelligence report on corruption at ESCOM, paid for by Business Leadership South Africa. Lindsay Dentlinger, Eyewitness News. And proceedings in the Senzumayiwa trial will resume tomorrow following a postponement due to the absence of an interpreter. The matter was expected to continue with the soccer star's close friend Mtogozisi Twala back for cross-examination. Five men are being tried at that court for the Bafana Bafana captain's murder in October 2014. A partly cloudy day in store for Gauteng tomorrow, Joburg dropping to an overnight low of 6 degrees, peaking at 21, Pretoria 8 and 23, Freenaging 6 and 22. Lerato Hufala, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. Incident. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? We return home. We bring in a queer, Come on, come on, come They don't know how to trap the ball. Striker, you can't trap the ball. You don't have technique and you are important. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. Death must not be proud in this instance. But one thing about death is it likes talent. It chooses. It selects whom it wants. And it takes when you least expect. May Alex Shakwan rest in peace. My condolences to the family of Alex, Mr. Kofuka Shakwan. He is uh, one that loves football, one uh, that follows football, a staunch football follower. Tragedy over the weekend. A man was a good friend of the show through many, many years. Now, this is a loss that goes beyond sundowns, beyond Pretoria. It's a South African loss, Alex Shakwane, who today, we look back at his glorious life. I mean, let's pay tribute to him. We've got in studio the Mamelodi Sundowns ambassador, Diani Mabund. I, I strongly believe that Bralex was more famous than all the superstars that came to Mamelodi Sundowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, because everybody who comes there, you're welcomed by a legend. You begin, when you enter there, you, you, you already know there is a man called Goldfingers. He, he, his blood is yellow. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Marawa Sports Worldwide. This is 947. Music, life, hashtag MSW. If you're worried about your sporting calendar, let's update it very, very quickly. There's exactly 122 days left uh, before the Rugby World Cup. If your focus is on the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023, there's 108 days that are remaining before that event kicks off. What about in Cape Town, the Netball? Netball World Cup in exactly 80 days from today. The FIFA Women's World Cup, 72 days. Not too sure which event you're going to be attending, but that's your updated calendar right here on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, good evening and welcome to the show. It's a busy show that we do have. People coming in and out, exciting, important individuals. And you're listening to 947 also live on Rise FM, live on Vuma FM and live on Sowetan Live. And you know what? We are interactive. 0607080484. Do send us your WhatsApp voice notes at any stage uh, during the show. Now, if you've been following football, you'll know this gentleman very, very well. One of our immediate superstars. I still call him that. He's a legend. Gazillion times over. And very few top flight clubs, though, are as passionate as far as developing football on the African continent as Arminia Bielefeld. And for an institution with such a rich history and legacy to them, seeing them take the time out and also empower aspiring talents here in South Africa or anywhere around Africa... That to us is a very, very big deal. And they've done just that with the latest project, holding coaching clinics in Mpumalanga. I think Mpumalanga is gifted and blessed because just yesterday we had guests coming through from Mpumalanga talking about 
their attempts at development and also just what they've been doing so far. And here today, we've got an international spin to it. Let's get in touch with them uh, to get more information on that initiative. The Armenia Bielefeld SA Ambassador, Darren Buckley, is here. Tom Schutz is here, Armenia Bielefeld's under-17 head coach. Gentlemen, both of you, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening to you, Robert. Yeah, good evening. How's, how's Darren been as a host? Because I look at you as being the visitor and him as being almost like the tourism ambassador. <laughs> how's your experience been so far? Yeah, it's nice to be here. And um, yeah, it's for me the first time in South Africa. It's uh, very nice here. And uh, yeah, Darren, uh, tell me something about the country. And yeah. uh, he's my security. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you don't need it here. Yeah. You don't need any security. Darren's even wasting his time being that. But from your expectations of what South Africa is to what you've seen, both as a country and also just with the kids, the under 17s, what have you picked up? What have you noticed? Yeah, we start with this program in 2020 yeah. and um, the club, uh, yeah, think about other ways uh, that they go and then we uh, look about the the past and uh, we remembered Darren and the other legends from uh, Zubi Zuzama and uh, Ruben Fernandes and uh, then it was an easy step to go to South African and uh, yeah uh, in the last uh, two years we we come to South Africa and uh, drain a lot of kids or so coaching clinics and uh, yeah Yesterday we we were at Standard and trained with uh, I think 70 kids and after the training session you see a lot of smile and you know okay that's the right way. What what are they believing? Are they believing that one day they they might have an opportunity here, Tom, of of being like a Darren Buckley, leaving South Africa, uh, going to become a, a well spoken of player, an international player in Germany, and obviously representing the national team. Yeah. The step to do South Africa, we the plan from the from the club for Amina Bielefeld is uh, um, do uh, building bridge, uh, bridges, yeah, to go in another country and learn from the other country and uh, the opportunity to share knowledge with uh, the people here, with the uh, with the cooperation with FC Maritzburg, yeah. and uh, yeah, for the uh, youth coaches. Uh, in the in the past, we do a lot of coaching clinic with the coaches from Armenia, with the coaches from Maritzburg, with coaches uh, from everywhere, and uh, yeah. The most thing is to building bridges, not to find the new Darren Buckley. Yeah, Darren Buckley right here. Uh, good to see you, sir. Um, ever working hard? And uh, the, the big question, though, and I know that there's football talent all over. You know this. Why in Bumalang? The thing is that, Rob, you know, it's a great honor for me to be the ambassador for Bielefeld. Yeah. And uh, the reason why uh, Bielefeld is doing this in South Africa, because they want to close gaps. You know, they want to uh, expose their name in South Africa to make Bielefeld, you know, if you walk around and the first thing you see the emblem, ah, that's Bielefeld, you yeah. know. And uh, through my experiences, you know, and which I've also seen is that they want to close the gap between development because the coaches you have in South Africa that are coaching sh uh, such uh, teams in mm -hmm. Pumalanga far away are not highly qualified. You know, the, the majority of them are dads, uncles and so on. So when we come along and do these coaching clinics for coaches, you know, they get to open up their eyes to, oh, this is the right thing that we have to do. This is how we have to train and teach these kids mm. to be better footballers. So we're actually closing the gap, you know, but the first priority for Bielefeld is not to discover players and bring them overseas. Sure. You know, it's for them to build bridges between corporates, you know, for teaching, as mm. I said, coaches, uh, especially development. Because to be honest with you, if you see under 17, South African player and under 17 German player, it's chalk and cheese yeah. <laughs> because the quality of training he's getting mm. in Germany, it's, it's, it's mountains because all the, co all the coaches are highly qualified. Yeah. Like for me, example, if I have to go apply for a job with my UEFA B license, I wouldn't be looked at. In you have, Germany. In Germany. Yeah. You have to have UEFA A to coach a, a development team, which shows you mm. that the quality they want, you know, to implement into these kids, it's very high. Where in South Africa, you don't have that. You know, and this is why you have this big gap because, as I said, through my experience coaching at Amazulu, coaching at uh, Marisburg United and so on, you, you'll probably get under 19 or under 17 player coming into the professional level 
and then us coaches have to teach him how to play a diagonal ball. How to you know? trap. How to trap, exactly. Yeah. Just, we just heard it now. <laughs> yeah. you know? So, uh, so uh, we, we, we're trying to make things much, much easier for professional coaches on the professional level when these develop, uh, development kids come into the professional level. But why do you think there's such a gap, though? And I know, Tom, this might have sounded weird when Darren said it, but it's true. It's, it's something we've spoken about mm-hmm. many years, uh, even when he was still a football player. Um, is Why do you think there is a gap? Do we not take uh, coaching seriously? We just think we can rock up, gather some kids, and be the father figure. And you know why I ask? And, and, and it's a clear example we've seen just the other week at UEFA Champions League level. A 16-year-old comes onto the field at that level coming onto the field we don't even have that you know just at normal club level that is unheard of uh, coaches frown upon it he's too young we'll wait for him to turn 26 when he's a youngster because our, our youngsters are 26 and above why do you think there's this big void okay first of all rob uh if you see in germany most of the well germany all the all the the overseas clubs and leagues it's compulsory to have a development from the age of seven all the way up until the second team. Hmm. Where in South Africa, you don't have that. Yeah, You only have maybe under 15s and then under 17s, you know, the Disky team and then the professional team. You don't have all the way down. So this is the big gap, which when you have, um, you know, when you have the coach that are developing, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm sure you've noticed and seen it, mm-hmm. that we, have, we hardly have any... Um, coaching courses here in South Africa, which today I was asked a question, is Safa doing enough? And I said, I'm sure they're doing enough, but not more than enough that they're supposed to do, you know, mm. opposed to having coaching clinics for coaches to educate them, to knowledge them. They're not doing that. I mean, if you see, when was the last time the under-17s had friendly games? Only until now, yeah. when the Africa, African Cup pitched up, yeah. all of a sudden there was under-17 national team. And Same with under 23s. Under 23s, yeah. exactly. So you see, there's, there's, there's that big gap which now you have Bielefeld mm. as a professional team from Germany coming and trying to close that gap, you know, to, to bring their knowledge over to, well, as I said, to teach coaches the proper way of understanding the game, of understanding how to develop mm. young, quality, talented players. All right, I think I remember when you first came into the country, though, as Bielefeld uh, uh, coach Ennis Wittendorp was still down in, in Maritzburg at Maritzburg United at the stage. Uh, but it wasn't about him having been at the Bundesliga. I mean, he's a good friend of South African football all round, having coached at the highest level. But then, Tom, when you look at the input now, is it going to be consistent? Uh, you know, is Bielefeld going to be there for the long haul? Because you might come through, plant a seed, but then find that maybe after two years, three years, you, you, you might find out you want to look at opportunities elsewhere. Is your commitment more the long term here? Yes, of course. Um, the plan is uh, for a long time to cooperate with this country. Yeah. And uh, uh, now we are here, we are in four weeks. Uh, also here, um, the, the CAO from Arminia Bielefeld, Christoph Wortmann, come to the country. And uh, we plan a, a lot of activations here. And... Um, yeah, it, we plan it for a long, long, long time. And, and just your role again, I know that as a coach, you actively take part in the sessions, in training these kids, learning them developmentally what they need to know at this level of the game. That is part and parcel of your job. Yes, of course. Um, uh, you said I'm the under-17 coach and we win the uh, German championship uh, yeah. for four weeks. And... Uh, yeah, yesterday we have a coaching clinic, today we have a coaching clinic and we we talk about the training and I think uh, when you're the trainer, you your job is to uh, bring your players to make a decision mm-hmm. on, at the training. Then when they can do the right decision in the training, they can tr- do the, re- mm-hmm. the best decision on the pitch. When, when it's uh, in the 90 minutes, they g- do good. Dis- decisions. Do you find it it's slightly difficult though, and, and Darren will help us with that as well, Tom, but from your observation, we've always known South African football players born naturally with the gift, with the ball, being able to handle the ball, dribble, almost like a South American Brazilian type of flair with it, but not being able to be guided on what to do with that flair. Sometimes they overdo, they overindulge on the ball. How do you then bring in that professionalism where you separate the natural talent and get them to be more team players, get them to use that talent in a constructive manner? 
I think, yeah, the talent is very important, but I think the most thing is to you have the, a good uh, attitude to de for your development. Yeah, for explain uh, my player, um, my players this this season, mm -hmm. every training they called me one hour before we train. Hey Tom, can we go out uh, before we train? Can we do uh, shoots or uh, passes? And uh, I think that's an important thing to for, for the development for for each other. Darren, from your side, and, and I know that same question to you, and I see you then as a ball <laughs> player, you're somebody who was very good with the ball on your feet, somebody who was good with the ball, off the ball situations as well. So either way, you were winning, but how then do you answer that question I've just posed to Tom? One thing we need to realize here in South Africa is that we have quality, talented uh, young players. Right. There's no doubt about that. It's a fact. But the problem is it boils down to discipline. You know, our South African players are not very disciplined. But also, you know, that also uh, has a problem of, of course, the, the coaching that they're getting mm -hmm. because football has changed dramatically. You know, now if you, see, if, you watch, if you watch football, it has this concept, tactics, the way you have to play from the back and come out. A player can be how talented, you know, he can be how good on the ball. But if he can't understand the coach's concept on how he wants to play, he'll be a lost and found baggage on the field. So this is why in Germany, the, when these young players come with the age of 16, 15 to the professional clubs, they're really taught the system-wise how to mm. blend in. So when they come to the professional level, it's just like they're walking. Like you, you'll swear if an 18-year-old comes into the first team, like he's been there for years, mm. where you have an 18-year-old coming into a professional team in, in, the, in the PSL, he's struggling. And then it, you know, it, it takes time for him to blend in. And the clubs and coaches here in Africa, they don't have time for that. You need to come in and produce. Mm. And if you don't, then they get rid of you, which is wrong because that kid that has come into the professional level trying to get his chance hasn't been taught right. He's been taught the wrong things because the coaching that he's getting, the coaches that are worth teaching him are not highly qualified. They think they know what they're doing, but they don't. Because if you see, and I, and you know, I, I hate to say it, if you see Bafana play, mm. the minute the player gets a ball in the midfield, he's too many touches. One touch, two touch, three touch. And you ask yourself, why is not distributing the ball mm. as quickly as possible going forward? It's because he's been trained that way. Where you have a player in Germany, less touches uh, makes the game go quicker. quicker. Mm. So if a ball is coming to you from one direction, you need two touches to turn going in the opposite direction which cuts the, cuts the seconds of you holding the ball, yeah. where you have an African player will take one, two, three, four. That's already five seconds that you have the ball on your foot when you're having a player putting pressure on you and then you lose it. But that's, as I'm saying, it's things which have been taught, which has been drilled in their mind. Yeah. It become optimism. So now you mm. must try and get it out of them when they come to professional level. It's, it's, it's hard work. It's difficult. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine the difficulty that you're going to have to encounter. All right, there are my guests. There are in studio. If I do you take part as well in the conversation, 011-7838947, 888 It is Tom Schutz, who's here, is the Arminia Bielefeld under-17 head coach. Also, the Arminia Bielefeld SA ambassador, Darren Buckley. Don't go anywhere. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, on 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Welcome to your best life, your time in paradise. You're about to go shopping, time to make it rain. But instead of buying swag, you're buying pills for back pain. After all your hard work, you deserve only the best. But after only two shops, you head home for a rest. Wouldn't you rather live the life you dream of sooner? Good things come to those who don't wait to invest. Coronation. Trust is earned. Coronation is a registered FSP. You spoke and we listened. Lotto Star has added more blackjack tables for your limitless betting experience. We have 28 new live blackjack games with over 100 tables to choose from. Take a seat and put your best hand forward for a chance to win instant payouts of over 800,000 rand. Enjoy the best that your world of live games has to offer.
Lotto Stars, licensed by the Mpumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006 008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera brings you wow-worthy resolution. So much resolution, in fact, that you'll be able to zoom, crop, scale, and print your images without losing any detail. Now that's epic. Buy any Galaxy S23 now and add the Galaxy Watch 5 from only 49 Rand per month. And get free Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, valued at 399. Galaxy S23 Series. Share the epic. T's and C's apply. Things are racing ahead. Your account's in the red. The kids need new shoes and account payments are due. I shame South Africa. You need a reason to smile. So get smiling with these deals from Spa. 500 grams Spa Choice Salted Butter, 54.99. And 3 kg Sunlight Auto 2-in-1 Washing Powder or 2 litre Auto Liquid Assorted, 89.99. Valid until 21 May while stocks last. Teas and C's apply. Spa, wear for smiles. are coming to South Africa with a Wild Dreams Tour. 3 November, Sunbed Arena, Times Square. Performing all your favorite Westlife hits and more. Tickets on sale this Friday exclusively from Ticketmaster.co.za. Brought to you by 947, another big concerts experience. On Marawa Sports Worldwide. You know, Robert, uh, my uh, ne- my nephew, ten years old. Uh, he is a Chiefs fan. After Pirates won, he was sad, you know, and he saw me happy. So he said to me, "Malume, please wear this um, Kaiser Chiefs jersey just to make me happy." So I did wear his jersey, Robert. You know, he's ten years old. Even though he chased me, he didn't but I wore the jersey. Then I decided to go to the kitchen because it's winter now. You know, warm things to go make myself a cup of coffee. Went to the kitchen, tried to lift the cup. Komisha is so good. Tried to lift the cup again. Couldn't lift the cup. Ah, ironically. After I took the jersey out, the Kaiser Chief jersey, I put a Pirates jersey on. <laughs> Lifted the cup, made a cup of coffee. Now I'm happy, Robert. Dango Pirates. <laughs> you crazy. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. And Rob, uh, Delron and Tom. Rob, just want to echo your sentiments that Delron Buckley is the living legend, uh, having played uh, much of his career abroad. I uh, just want to find out from you, Delron, do you also share experience and the qualities with the youngsters that they need to possess in order for them to be international exports like you? And also want to find out how was it like for you playing in front of uh, a Borussia Dortmund fan, uh, particularly the yellow wall? Because for me, everyone talks about the atmosphere at Elias arena but for me one of the electrifying atmosphere in the football uh, match is that uh, of Borussia Dortmund particularly what happens in the yellow wall for me I just want to hear uh, your views on that it's the boy Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Deboho. Direct question to Darren Buckley, who is here as the Arminia Bielefeld SA Ambassador. Tom Schutz is here as the Arminia Bielefeld Under-17 Coach. Uh, firstly, Darren, that question, eh? The yellow wall, Borussia Dortmund, having to play, having to face them, especially playing away. Well, you know, uh, Borussia Dortmund is one of the biggest clubs in, in Germany. There's no doubt about that. You know, the fan base, oh, it goes beyond. Yeah. Uh, you have, if you play there, you have about 80,000 uh, every second week. And playing in front of 80,000, uh, uh, you get goose pimples, of course. Yeah. But plus, your nerves are up because the Dortmund fans, they can get in your back. Then when you, you start losing. And uh, when you, if you're 1-0 down, 2-0 down, they'll make you aware that you're not doing well. Yeah. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm human. It yeah. comes with the nerves and so on. But uh, when you're winning and the going's getting good, you know, you've got the fans behind you. It's such a magnificent feeling playing for Borussia Dortmund. 
Yeah, I, though I, I did say Deboko to Darren during the break that uh, he owes us a session on a on a Friday to come back for a full hour uh, so that we can talk about his career and we can throw all of those questions at him. Um, maybe the other aspect that he was asking about is just to try and influence the youngsters to become a, a Darren Buckley, somebody that holds themselves in the manner that you did uh, to become an international player that can play their trade overseas for a longer period as you did. Well, this is why I'm saying I'm very happy to be the ambassador for Beautiful because uh, what I've been doing for the past years by myself, yeah. you know, trying to help kids, you know, learn the proper way of playing the game. I even had my own soccer school called the Darren Bucky Soccer School where I had to teach the kids the fundamentals, the basics, you know, of, of as I said, playing the game. And then uh, from there, I moved into coaching at Amazulu, trying to do the same thing. But now I'm, I'm, I'm at the UKZN University mm. and uh, for one and a half years now. And what I've did there, you know, I've changed from zero to hero. You know, I had players that were... I can be honest with you, not as good as possible. Yeah. But now the football that we are playing is top football because I got them to understand, or you know, the the concept, you know, the modern football of today, where you have to be if you are a left defender, right defender, a striker, so they understand the game properly. Mm. But I'm a one man, a one going man. I can't teach the whole world here, the whole of South Africa. I'm trying to do my best in every in every in every action. But slowly and surely, as I said, you know, what the, the kids that I've taught them, you know, I taught them how to understand the game, taught them the fundamentals, the basics, they've proved dram- dramatically. Mm. Parents have come to me and said to me, yo, my child at club level, it's gone from, from here right until the top. It's unbelievable. You and know? it's just coaching. And it's just coach exactly, coaching. Just but, making him but, understand. But proper coaching, because we all can coach. But how qualified <laughs> are we to coach in that manner? This is exactly what I said today, Robert, when I had all the coaches. I said, every Tom, Dick and Harry can coach, can put cones. <laughs> but to be a proper coach, you need yeah. to understand the character of the, of the well, child, every Tom of Dick, the player. Every Tom, Dick and Harry can, but there's a Tom that's right here next to us. Eh? And he's a very qualified man. He's yeah. very qualified. All right, yeah. so Jay uh, Sitabe on Twitter says, listening and loving the conversations. I've been a while ever since I heard from Darren Buckley as a shareholder of the show. I'm very happy and very, very satisfied. Uh, Tom, maybe just to give us your parting words. I know you guys got to dash to other interviews now. Um, Just the expectation all around. You head back to Germany pretty soon. What kind of report card do you send back in terms of what you've learned? Um, I take the part. uh, I take the part uh, in in the next training with uh, when I talk with my players. they have a lot of a uh, lot of fun when they train yes. and i see it here in the kids uh, the 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 places the fields are not so good like in germany but no kid say oh this is a bad field in germany when the grass is a little bit too high the <laughs> the player <laughs> oh, it's a bad place i think no this is a very good place for you to train and uh, train harder than the other guys and have fun every time but mm-hmm. because football is that what you love and that's, uh, that's the reason how they go to a, the pr- professional player. Yeah, I think just carry on with the good work. we more than happy to have hosted you in the country and I hope to see you more and more and more. If you're next to this man, uh, the royalty of uh, football in this country, <laughs> then yeah, he, yeah, you're, you're with the right guy. You're with the right guy. And Darren, maybe just your parting words in, in summary of the journey that you've had in Bumalanga. Uh, you know, just maybe paint a picture to South Africans listening to the show right now of what the future at Under-17 looks like. Well, you know, what we did yesterday going to, to Pumalanga and uh, just uh, open up these kids' eyes to see a different kind of training sessions, you know, coaches coming from, from Europe being there, you know, to give them hope. Because I can promise you, and which I which actually heard, yeah. that even PSL clubs don't even go that far, yeah. you know, to, to probably uh, scope out kids or help them or give them that chance, you know, that hope that you're going to probably make it some way. Yeah. And this is what b is doing. So this is, you know, as I'm saying, they've come here, you know, to expand their name, uh, to cut to cut that, that, that development very, very short, that everyone understands this is the way you need to do it. Mm. You know, especially coaches, players, 
and so on. All right, let me squeeze in a quick voice note. I think it's related to our conversation here. Hi, Robert. It's A.B. Muloy from Naturena. Please ask Delron and uh, your guest there, from which age are they targeting uh, this thing of uh, development? Because uh, the problem in South Africa is that uh, uh, we, we, we tend to cash these boys at the, the age of 15 and uh, 16 and then we say they are still young. Whereas you go to, to Europe, uh, a boy at the age of 16 and 15, he's already a, a full-time member of a FS team. Thank you very much. Baby, thank you so much indeed. So it is under 17, right? For now, you're dealing with under yeah. 17. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so just answering your question, um, when when a player gets scoped out, you know, and they want to find a player, the player has to have every single thing. They don't look at the player's technical abilities, how mm-hmm. good he is. He has to have body language. He has to have respect on the way his, his, his whole structure when he comes and gives his hand to a coach and looks a coach into his eyes. This is what these international coaches look at, mm. you know. So if a player goes overseas, you know, they see if he can communicate, if he's a leader, you know, if he can cope up with intensity and so on. Mm. Despite thing if that kid is so good and technical strong, but he also needs to have these other fundamentals which these coaches want. They want the full packet. Right. They don't want a half a player. So you're not going to send a half a player there because he'll come right back. This is why when parents call me, ah, my boy is good. You need to send him overseas. Okay, bring him to me. Let me have a look. And I can see, number one, he's unfit. Yeah. (laughs) Number two, he can't even control the ball. Maybe he can shoot and score. Yeah. But he can't control the ball. Now, if I got to send him there, they're going to say, Bucks, are you crazy? Yeah, what, what are, are you, you sending to us? us? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it has to be that full packet. <laughs> and I can tell you, in, in, in Europe, it's not easy when you come there. It's yeah. not easy. You can't just walk into a team because mm. there's positions of quality players that you've got to fight for. Mm. Yeah? And they're probably three, four levels above you. So you have to be extraordinary. That is why we still struggle to have regular players playing in the EPL, regular players playing in the Bundesliga. Unlike back in the day when we had a whole array of players that were able to play both in the EPL and in the Bundesliga and, and, and. Gentlemen, I've got to let you go. Otherwise, I'm going to get into trouble with your next appointment. (laughs) Uh, Tom, as well as Darren, thank you so much. And everything of the best, guys, having had such an honor to host you both. Thanks, Rob. Take Thank you. Easy, man. Appreciate it. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Tragedy over the weekend. A man was a good friend of the show through many, many years. Now, this is a loss that goes beyond sundowns, beyond Pretoria. It's a South African loss. Alex Shakwane, who today, we look back at his glorious life. I mean, let's pay tribute to him. We've got in studio the Mamelodi Sundowns ambassador, Diani Mabunda. You know, it's a very sad moment for us as Mamelodi Sundowns because uh, we lost one of the, the pillars, uh, the icons of, of, of the club. He was really committed to Mamelodi Sundowns. He says it himself, I am Sundowns. That's yeah. what that was his line. Uh, you begin to understand when somebody has removed his own values and he he puts the, the values of the club ahead of himself and he was really one of the Sundowns faithfuls. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Madrupotu, <laughs> Amen. Hashtag MSW Inquisitive Fun. It's radio. Hashtag MSW. All right, uh, it almost feels like uh, we are at an airport here, hey? Flights landing, others are taking off. It's a beautiful thing, that's why we love sport. <laughs> Welcome. If you're just uh, joining us, you're listening to hashtag MSW. It is Marawa Sports Worldwide live on 947. Also live on Vuma FM, Rise FM, and on Sowetan Live. 
It is so beautiful that we don't even have time to greet a guest. You know, you just uh, shoot straight. Yeah, you have him sitting in front of you. And that's why AJ, who is a South African-born motorcycle rider who has been riding ever since the age of three. Shah, crazy. He's currently 35 years old, races in South Africa in the MR SSA. I mean, that's, that's the series that he finished, what, second overall back in 2022. Great finish, in fact. And AJ does a lot of youth development work within the South African motorcycle industry to help grow the sport locally. So the daredevil is here himself in the flesh. Good to see you, AJ. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rob. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Sure. From the age of three, how the hell did you manage that? Yeah, you know, Rob, motorcycle racing has been in... Uh in our family a long time yeah i know uncle my dad your dad grandfather my everyone grandfather, yeah yeah but how though i mean how did it get into the dna of the family did you ever ask i haven't to be honest with you yeah um i've got a little boy now a little five-year-old who's mental about motorbikes and, already <laughs> and, and ridiculously mental and and i'm sort of trying to guide him away from it you know, but all he wants to do is ride and ride and ride and ride. And you can't though, because like I say, it's in the DNA. So what, what daddy does, you know, I'm going to do as the son. And you can't run away from that. Maybe he's going to go in places where you were not able to. He's going to break the records that you were not able to break as well. So if you started at three, he's five. He's already two years late. Yeah, you know, Rob, I watch some of the things he does in the mornings. You know, everything's a race. Yeah. Whether you getting out of bed, getting in the shower, eating your breakfast. So... <laughs> a lot crazy. of people, <laughs> a lot of people give me a, give me a hard time, um, just to you know tell you that he's gonna go that route. Yeah. And as much as I'm against it, if he goes that route, it's it's a stressful thing for me. People talk about the Isle of Man, and we all start to shiver and shake because we know how how tough, how how difficult that is, and not only just how tough and difficult it is. We always look at the worst case scenario. We always look at you could be injured. And I know there's some people that you know who are still trying to recover from injuries. We've been very close to the races as well. But it's also a race potentially like anything that you get into, which is motor related, could end your life. But you've been at this for the longest time and you still want some more. I think this year you even want some more. You'll tell us about it later on. But what are those dangers? I mean, just tell us about why it is pitted as being one of the most dangerous races in the world. So, Rob, the, the Isle of Man TT is a street race. Yeah. Okay, and it's it's based in the Isle of Man, um, in the UK, between England and Ireland. And uh, it basically, it's a 37-mile long course that they make on the public roads. So, you basically, you're going through towns, you're going through villages, you're going over jumps and bumps and practice week runs uh, from the 28th. And if you, it's a normal day of work. You know, so they run it over two weeks because it's not like any event where yeah. you would have a Friday practice and a Saturday race. You would, you know, everybody goes to work during the day. So it's about half an hour, 40 minutes before uh, before the session starts, they close the roads. So everybody finishes work at, say, four o'clock. They let open the roads, let everybody go home, and then they block off the roads and, and, and you have this race. You know, and it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's something, it's unique. You know, but also just the speeds though. You, you're clocking what 280? Yeah, so 300. So you'll do 300. I think 325 is one of the fastest recorded speeds at the end of one of the straights. Um, and it's on a public road, so there's, there's, there's actually it's a bit of a myth as well when it comes to the exact top speed because each year the bikes are getting faster and faster. Yeah. You know, your tires and your electronics and the technology is improving so much that you move the speed traps a little bit higher to try and, sorry, higher up a straight, for example, right. to try and keep the speed down. Because if something did happen or uh, uh, there was an I an issue, you know, they uh, the cops or, or the coroner would look at it and go, but guys, you're doing 300 kilometers on a public road, <laughs> you know? <laughs> where, where in the world can you do, call it over 200 alone? Yeah, you know, exactly. where can you do 200 legally with people cheering you on and it's, it's, it's encouraged, you know? I, I, like, I like the way you say, if there was an issue. I mean, you so politely put it. All right, let's find out what these little issues uh, could be. But I think he, he's kind of safe. He's got some of the best uh, tires you could ever ask for, uh, being a Dunlop ambassador right here in SA. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM.
and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Welcome to Free Apps and Rewards, where you get more for your everyday spend. No hidden fees, just real cash back. Earn up to 30% real cash back, depending on your rewards tier, when you use your apps card at any of our rewards partners. That's more entertainment, more treats, and more short lifts. Zero membership fees, no counting points, just real cash back. I can with APSA. That's Africanacity. <laughs> Open your transactional account and sign up for APSA Rewards today. Hashtag more free APSA Rewards. APSA is an authorized financial services and a registered credit provider. TNC apply. Power, precision, performance. It's no coincidence that so many P's describe the perfect pickup. It's also no accident that the closest you'll get to perfect is the new GWM P-Series range. Aside from proven off-road pedigree and luxury interiors, the G is the first pickup in SA with a 360-degree camera, semi-autonomous driving, and a sunroof. Visit dealassist.gwm.coza for special offers. GWM P-Series, the power of perfect performance. With easy-to-connect MWeb LTE SIM and router deals, you can scroll, lull, stream, and meme, even when the power is out. From only $3.99 per month, you'll not only get better internet, but a free UPS too, so everyone at home can stay connected without any expensive data worries. Don't miss out. Get your free UPS today with MWeb LTE. Visit mweb.co.za or call 087-700-5000 to find out more. T's and C's apply. Save big on fresh at Food Lovers Market with Big Deal Wednesday. This Wednesday, we have an unbeatable deal for you. Buy two large pawpaws for only 30 rand and get another two absolutely free. That's two delicious pawpaws for just 30 rand and another two free. Now that's incredible value. Valid this Wednesday only at all inland Food Lovers Market stores. The best and fresh guaranteed. It's Harold's Netflix Mother's Day hotline. Harold, I'm Zulu. Sunny Bona. You don't understand. There's lots of mamas and drama if I don't get gifts. There's Umam Tembi from church, Umam Cindy from Pilates, not to mention Umama, my mama. Oh, Mama Mia, don't worry, Daddy's here. Ned Forest has something marvellous for every Mama. Down, go put Harold. Baba Harold to you, my Baba. Just head to Ned Forest and order your Mother's Day gifts for any Mama that slipped your mind. Mother of all smooches. Feel rewarded and be rewarded at Virgin Active. Join this May and get a three-month premium membership upgrade or sign up as a premium member and get 50% off your fees for three months. Love the post-workout highs and long-term rewards. Call 0860 Get Fit or visit your nearest Virgin Active to get started. Virginactive.co.za. T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, Mr. Collins Silabella, Safa's Echlanzini spokesperson and also Fortune Spear, Oric Institute of Technology. We met as Echlanzini region. We decided that, look, we've got talent identification. How do we go about it? That to find a sponsor. We're happy that uh, Forex agreed to sponsor us. And we are now married uh, with Forex in community property. We are looking that it will go further and further. We are not ready to divorce. Yeah. Because we are looking at the long term that this program grows until all the regions in Pumalanga they play the regional league uh, at Tanzania, Kharsibande and Kangala. Wow, I, mean, I think uh, I feel like I'm in a church here where there's a wedding vows uh, being uh, exchanged. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. All right, the only wedding vows that are happening here are AJ as well as the Isle of Man, the TT. Version. I see on social media a lot of people asking me here, AJ, I know you were breaking it down in terms of the Isle of Man, the TT races. What's what's the big difference? Being a street race, yes. Is there anything else you can break down just to get us to mentally understand what it is that you go through? So the, the Isle of Man TT is, like we mentioned, a street yeah. race. Um, so you, it's it's... The, the distance that you would ride so in, in relation to a, a race track yeah. like a kalami or, or you know anything overseas kalami i think is four kilometers four and a half kilometers long per yeah. lap the alaman tt course is 37 miles which is it's about 65 kilometers um so and it's like i say of ups and downs yeah. and public roads so your conditions change quite a lot in uh, in race week we do so they break it up over two weeks and you you ride in different classes 
And uh, when I say on the big bike, we you ride a thousand cc super bike, and then you ride a six hundred cc super bike, and then you have a slightly slower six fifty cc motorbike. Right. And uh, they're all different ev- different classes you can enter. Now the two big events of that, the two big races, is a six lap race. So within those six laps, you're doing thirty seven miles. Your fuel becomes a an issue you know petrol so mm. we run bigger fuel tanks we run obviously the, you, you've got to build the bike and this this is the first year that we building our own bike you know so it's a south african bike south african team um south african mechanics i mean we, we can even go as far as sent and bmw or the guys that provided us with a bmw that we're riding on the big bike and uh I mean, even the courier Skynet yeah. that are transporting the bike is a South African-based business. So it's quite a proud thing to have. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if, if any South African rider team, if you call it that, has put something together and gone abroad, entered the world, call it the mm-hmm. world's toughest road race, you know, as, and, and, and done it on their own bat. So I mean that's a proudly essay moment. And, and I think also part of our duty as a show here is, is to make sure that the likes of proudly say they get to know about it uh, the likes of the minister of sport gets to know about this i mean if not only you being south african but having a team around you that is purely and 100 percent south african that means a big deal so everything we've done rob from from the the, the tires yeah. you know, our tires we've got locally uh all the parts for the bike in terms of building the bike the race preparation um the, like i mentioned the transportation the mechanics yeah. the the and you know something I've got quite a big interest in the youth in terms of teaching kids and, and, and growing kids up in, in the development. I run a riding school. And uh, to come back from an event like that is something you can, you know, you can, you can give back to the kids. Yeah. You know, I was at a, at a race meeting now on Saturday where the youngsters ride at the short circuit. And to see some of those little kids running around, it's the cutest thing ever, you know. And, and for me, I, I, I don't spend a lot of time at them, so I'm not familiar with them. Mm. But the kids will come up to you and you'll have a chat with them. And, you know, something stuck out to me was this little youngster walked past me and he, he, he out of the blue with his kit and everything on just before his race, you know. And he said, are you AJ? And I was like, yes, boy. And he says, well, do you know who I am? You know, and, and I, I didn't know who he was, but he was just so proud to ask me if I know who he is. Yeah. You know, and I was like, yes, man, I've been watching you the whole morning and you, you know, you really, you're riding well. And I just, every time he would ride, I'd go and find him and just go give him a pat on the back and you can see the enjoyment, you know, they, 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 they enjoy that. So he obviously knows who his hero is. All he wants is for the hero to at least start to know him now. And, and it's a good, honest and innocent kind of question to ask as a kid because it, it also doubles up on why your academy then becomes so important in terms of helping and shaping the youngsters. Yes, you know, in, in, in motorsport in South Africa is a, is a very small minority. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and it's somewhere that needs to be invested. So the likes of, and I'm sure you'll be familiar of, of Brad Binder. Yes. Um, you know, what Brad's done for South Africa, for himself, for everyone, yeah. you know, he's, he's put motorcycle racing and South Africa on the map, you know, and what's good with Brad is he's so good with the people, he's so good with the kids, he's so, so that's already given it a big kick, you know, and, yeah. and, and all, there's a handful of riders that some people know, some are in, the, in America, some in the UK, you've got to give back to the kids, yeah. you know, because we, we're getting old, you know, yeah. we, we, we're growing and they need to filter through. So, I, enjoy, I enjoyed conversations with, with Brad even before he won his first race. But he was that open. I think he was, he wanted to tell the story before it happened. I, I can't say now that, you know, he is known worldwide that we can't get that opportunity. I'll be lying about it. We still can. And you're absolutely right. I think his humility allows him to do that. And long may that continue. In fact, let me take a caller from Bedford View. Diedrich, good evening. Rob, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Hey, all i got to say is, whatever you've been doing, Diedrich, please continue, never stop. Yeah, no, thank you very much. AJ Diedrich here from Skynet, and I just from a Skynet point of view, you know, I, I can only just add to what AJ said. This is such a good South African success story where two South African, um, firstly a company, and obviously AJ in his own right, um, and with his talent taking part in a global stage. We want to just, AJ, from a Skane point of view, wish you well, be safe. Um, you said earlier on that your the maximum speed there is 325 k's an hour. Hopefully with Skynet behind you, you can do uh, 326 or more k's. 
Um, but do it safely, so. But from all of us at Skynet, the entire Skynet global team, we really wish you well. Be safe and uh, thank you for making South Africa proud. Thank you, Dedrick. I really, really appreciate that. And just a thing, you know, thank you to all your team. Mm. The last two weeks with all the paperwork and the loading and the crates and They've been phenomenal. They've really, really, really gone out of their way. You know, just driving here now, yeah. they were still phoning us just to make sure is everything okay, everything sorted, because the stuff gets ready to leave tomorrow. Oh. So, Dedrick, you know, your your whole team, everyone at Skynet, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dedrick, I was going to ask you, though, what made you want to be part of sponsoring what ultimately we've been tracking and following AJ's progress and, and success story for a while? You know, we just haven't nailed him into the studio yet. But as, as Skynet... What encouraged you to be involved? Oh, you know what, just as a, as a company and as a global company, but specifically from a South African point of view, you know, we had a bit of a South African success story that's gone global. We've acquired businesses in London, Belgium, and Germany and elsewhere, where normally these big um, companies come and they buy South African companies. We've said, you know, let's, let us be the one that buys these international um, companies. Um, and then to, for us to, to st- um, stay true to the South African roots, and, and, and to help um, local sportsmen like AJ, like Kevin Arena. It's not mm-hmm. the only as We also sponsor Kevin Arena. So it's, it, I think it's important, and I think AJ said it best, you know, for South African companies to support our sub- South African superstars that's representing us on a global stage. And we have to get behind these people. You know, sports always has the ability to unite people. We've seen that since mm-hmm. 1994. But we have to, as corporates, get behind these superstars that's representing the, com- the, the country, the people, and our company on a global stage. Yeah, geez, Diedrich, thank you so much, man. That's really encouraging. Uh, also knowing about Kevin Larina as being one of the uh, people that you do sponsor. We've seen him. We've seen him up into the heavyweight division and try his, you know, his best to fly the South African flag. So as I say, keep flying that flag higher, Diedrich, in Bedford View. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Rob. And yeah, I just want to just use the opportunity to gain to say well done to, to AJ. His preparation's gone well. Good luck, be safe, and also to Kevin who's fighting um, for his title on Saturday. Good luck to Kevin as well. Beautiful, beautiful stuff indeed. Jedrick in Bedford View uh, joining us. And that, that's encouraging. I mean, that's the kind of story that you, you, you want to talk about, tell your kids in the future about the involvement of big business in terms of what you're doing. I talked about Dunlop. Um, I know that it's a, it's a two-way thing here. There is a, a Michael Dunlop that you know you know, quite personally and very close to in terms of the, the racing space. But then obviously Dunlop the product as well. Do you still represent them? Are you still in an ambassadorial role or have you moved on since? So Rob, I, I was involved with Dunlop to my last TT, so I call it 2019. Right. Um, and Dunlop was a big contributor to the TT as well. Yeah. Um, and subsequent to that, when COVID hit, there was a bit of an issue with the tyres at Dunlop head office in the factory. And it became a safety issue. So this year, there's no Dunlop at the TT. Um, there's no representation. And when when that all became a bit of a, a, a an issue from Dunlop's perspective in Europe, and it was a worldwide thing, you know, yeah. it wasn't just AMDR. Um, I've done quite a bit of work with Michelin. And, uh, you know, th- this year, well, last year, actually, I think Michelin brought out a new tyre. Yeah. And it's not a, sh- a, a popular tyre at the TT, but... And I, I did my homework. Is the fastest newcomer at last year's TT, and the fastest newcomer at my last TT was actually a teammate of mine, who won Michelin's. Um, and I opted to go that route because we can't get those Dunlops in South Africa. And uh, Michelin have come on board, and they they, they back a racing, and you know what I mean. That you, mm-hmm. you, you, mm-hmm. you can work hand in hand. You can pick the phone up. You can phone around at Auto Cycle. You can have a coffee with him. You know, and 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 you've got the support you need. So. Yeah, we 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 going the route with Michelin. Um, I'll be running the and and believe it or not, the team I'm riding my my BM from South Africa, and uh, I'll be on a 600 and a different motorbike for the team based there. Quite a well-known team. Yeah. Um, also a bit of a funny story that you know it's a team. When I was young, I sort of I looked up to that team, you know, and uh, they run Michelins ironically. And the way the deal came about was, I phoned them to find out what they thought of the Michelin tires because I was taking the Michelin tires over. Okay. And after a, fo- a conversation, 20 minutes, I was riding one of their motorbikes. No you way. <laughs> so, so it opened it opened quite a door there. Yeah. You know, and, and, and yeah, so so as we speak now, I'm a Michelin man and I'm moving forward with Michelin and I'm very happy. Oh, shit, that sounded like an ad. Hey, I'm a Michelin man, <laughs> right? <yeah. laughs> Just I'm not the size of a Michelin man. <laughs>
<laughs> Tell me about Wilson Craig Racing Team, and and, and you know I'm not, I'm not. It's not a throwaway. We are extremely happy and proud. In fact, I don't know too many people that actually know about your association with um, Michelin as well. But the Wilson Craig Team. Tell me more about that. So the Wilson Craig team is a is a road racing team. Yeah. Okay. A very well established road race racing team from probably the last 10, 15 years of, of, of Irish road racing. So road racing specific like the TT and uh, uh, it, it originates from the Irish national roads. That's where the road racing aspect comes from. And uh, the team was run by a guy by the name of Wilson Craig who passed away, I think two or three years ago. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've had teammates in the past that have ridden for Wilson Craig, and when you're in the road racing fraternity, they follow the calendar, and that's it's it's like you know, in in Formula One, you want to drive a Ferrari or you want to drive a McLaren, or yeah. if you do road racing, you want to ride a Wilson Craig bike, you know. And uh, the previous years that I've gone over to TT, I've sort of seen them, and I met Wilson Craig back then, and I had a teammate, Guy Martin, um, in 2007 who he actually ended up riding for, for Wilson Craig. And yeah, that just opened the door. And when, when this whole thing came about, a friend of mine was riding, he got injured about three weeks ago and he phoned me and he, and he just said to me, you know, AJ, I'm, I'm hurt, I can't ride. So we're going to put a deal together. We're going to put you on the Wilson Craig bike. And you know, it, it was it was special that because I wanted a 600 to ride. Yeah. But I didn't expect to ride that bike, you know. So it has, it's, it's from a marketing perspective and, and just a personal thing of someone that followed racing from a young age, you know, it, it's 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 a photo to have in the room now, you know, in, in, in Dad's pub, absolutely. Craig Park, oh, you know, such achievement, man. I think the more you tell the story, kind of goosebumps because a lot of kids kind of yearn for the kind of dream, yes. uh, and you've been living a lot of kids' dreams yourself, and I, and I can understand why they would warm up to you. I see a lot of uh, questions that have been coming through. Uh, you yeah, know, got about a minute left. Uh, just saying that. Uh, What's what's AJ expecting to gain? What's he expecting to achieve? I, I don't know if it's more like the monetary gain from it. I mean, you mentioned Formula One and so on, and we know those guys earn crazy money as well. But from what you do, and as you head off to Isle of Man, the TT race, do you do you earn as much as let's say the other guys do? You know, Rob, it's it's not about the money. Yeah, um, there is big money in road racing. You know, if you if you're the Michael Dunlops and and, and the full people that do the full season of it. Um, you know, and, and, and for me, going to the Isle of Man is, it's, it's, you've got to be invited to go there. And mm. at the beginning of this year, we weren't too sure if we were in, if we were out, if we were going to go. And all these opportunities arose when I spent some time, we had a race here with Michael Dunlop at the beginning of the year. And just doors started to open. And, and, and I had a conversation with my dad. And my dad's coming over with me this year. You know, I wanted to take him last year as a as a gift for his 60th birthday yeah. and he's actually my mechanic that's coming over he's he's the rocket scientist that makes the bike go forward Crazy. you know and the 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 fact that we can go I said to my dad you know I don't think we'll get this opportunity again you know and because we have the chance we have the opportunity we can go there we can mm. ride it I can do it you know and, and, and to come back here and, and, and share the stories you know and, and if I can inspire people we want to try and take some more South Africans over next year you know go and show them the place and, and share our passion of, of motorcycle racing you know so for me it's more the passion than the money when do you leave? I leave next week Sunday next week Sunday take all our blessings AJ absolute pleasure uh, we'll share the social media platforms where you can follow AJ uh, right throughout the course of the day as we begin our post catch you again tomorrow AJ all the best my man Rob thank you very much appreciate it Marawa Sports Worldwide Live on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.